We saw a little bit of a drop off actually, Glee. So there's been a strong run up, as you know, a huge improvement in auction clearance rates really since July. And it's been a great spring selling season start. Uh, huge numbers of buyers out in force and listings really picking up. But perhaps that run up was a bit high because we did see 40% fewer properties taken to auction across the country on the weekend. And the preliminary clearance rate from CoreLogic is 73.6%. So that's down a little on the previous week. So starting to lose a little bit of steam there. And of course, we're watching those auction clearance rates closely all the time because if they can continue to improve, then it really is a solid indicator that the market is has legs for that recovery, which we're seeing. And, and is there a state that's sort of really uh, setting the standard at the moment? I, th I think Victoria's doing OK, isn't it? Melbourne's doing well, and they obviously suffered a little bit at the weekend because it was the start of the spring course, racing yeah. carnival. Yeah. So you, it's a bit of an anomaly there to look at that. But Sydney and Melbourne both picking up well, and that's in line with the home values that we're seeing uh, really making that bounce back. So CoreLogic came out with the October home value figures a couple of days ago and they showed that we are seeing that pick up quite strongly in Sydney and Melbourne. Brisbane even up 0.8% in October. So we are really starting to see that recovery pick up steam and um, that really flows through to the fact we've seen auction clearance rates pick up buyer demand is picking up, so that's obviously the RBA rate cuts are starting to, to work a little bit. Uh, we're seeing confidence improving, more people coming out at auctions. So, yeah, it's all starting to, to look a little bit better, but just the weekend gone, things a little bit lower with auction clearance rates. Now, the RBA kept uh, the rate on hold. You mentioned mm. the, the, the cash rate uh, on hold yesterday. Yep. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that and what sort of impact is that? Does that help with confidence, do you think? Well, it's, it wasn't surprising. Uh, all the economists had been picking that they'd, they'd keep it on hold after we've seen several cuts now, although they're still thinking we're going to see another one in February. Um, some are saying maybe even next month. But basically, uh, you know, we've seen it really start to flow through mm. to the property market. Without question. Without question. However, not enough to go through to household wealth and spending yet. We're still seeing that weak economy, which was something that... Governor Philip Lowe mentioned in the statement with the RBA um, result announcement this week, saying they're still wanting to see that pick up. So I think we're going to possibly definitely see uh, at least another rate cut in the next few months. Um, February, I think, is, as most people are saying. But, you know, if we can start to see that home value recovery and buyer pick up continue, then hopefully will flow through to the economy a little bit more too. Shane Oliver from AMP is saying that we might even be starting to see FOMO coming back to the market with a bit of a fear of missing out, wow. which we saw back in 2017. So buyers now thinking, oh, I need to get in again. Mm. You know, it's a good time before prices go up again. Ash Barty, of course, she pulled off that massive $6 million prize star. money check and now she's eyeing off property in Kingscliff. Yes, so this was a little bit on the quiet. She'd done a little bit of research and uh, the agents mentioned that her management have been in contact about this gorgeous property in Kingscliff right on the beachfront. It's massive three blocks of beachfront land wow. with a championship sized tennis court as of you can imagine. Course. Wimbledon status of course. Um, and it's the perfect training ground so that they said they have been looking at it as a home base potentially for her, so she would stay there in between competitions, do her training there, yeah. store her gear in the garage, go for a swim when wow. she feels like it. The only thing that's missing is maybe the putting green, so she can, you know, <laughs> get some golf in or a cricket pitch to cricket pitch. go back to her cricket, but it's an incredible mansion. 6.995 million they're asking for, and obviously she won, what, 6. Just around that. 6.1 on the and weekend. The check over. So that's nothing. I think she's got 16 million prize money all up at the moment. Yeah. But they said that she's got to be quick because there's another private Gold Coast investor sniffing it out at the moment. Yeah. Liz, that's one of the best parts of Australia, <laughs> that northern I know. New South Wales corridor. Isn't Kingscliff, it? you know, that Cougen area. Apparently, it's the only beachfront property between the Gold Coast and Byron with a tennis court. Right. So. Fantastic. Well, that makes yeah. sense for Ash Barty, who's. Uh, the Ipswich number one, girl yeah. Too, so it's not too far from home. Not far from home. It's a beautiful um, part of the world. I, I could easily see Ash Barty buying yeah, that property. Yeah, I, I'd buy it if I could. But um, that'd be interesting. So it's all a little bit hush hush at the moment. But we'll have to keep you'll an keep eye us, on that one for you'll you, keep and us I'll, in I'll the definitely loop. let you know right. when she picks it up. Liz Tilly, always a pleasure to have you on the front page.